Hello and welcome everybody again. This is the second interview within our partnership with Merck, Life Science Healthcare and Performance Materials. In the last video, I told you Merck was the oldest pharma company in the world. That's true, but they do much more. I just learned they also do the uh, crystals in our smartphone displays. As you can tell, I got a guest here. We did never ever um, meet before, so it's a pure accident. We're both wearing red. By the way, very stylish. Yeah, and sure. uh, this stylish young gentleman is? Hi, my name is Julian. I'm 22 years old and I'm the co-founder of Living Brain. And uh, you just told me before we just started, we had some time because we tried to show you a little bit of the innovation hub here of Merck. And we are right now in a different area of the innovation hub. And when we've been traveling around um, different parts of the um, of the furniture here, you told me you gradu graduated with a bachelor's just two weeks ago, right? Right. Right. Just two weeks ago, I graduated in economic psychology. And uh, you talked about... Um, helping rehabilitation of patients meaning something happened to them so um neurosurgery it it sounds like i'm a neurosurgeon it sounds pretty impressive but um what actually happens at neurosurgery when do you need it can you talk a little bit about the circumstances and what happens to the people and how you actually help them for sure so neurosurgery is um everything that is damaged in the brain you can take the most of them out. Let's do it on an example like epilepsy. Epilepsy is um, a disease that produces recurrent seizures that um, are mostly treated by medication, but in up to 30% of the cases, this medication does not help. And in these cases, a neurosurgery might be a procedure that could help the people making them seizure-free. and there are different parts of the brain. And here on the right side of the brain, we got the temporal lobe. And this is the, the part that mostly produces those seizures that need to be treated by neurosurgery. But deep within this structure, there is our memory, there is our emotion, and there are parts that are focused also on our attention. And if we take out this t part of the brain, Many patients suffer afterwards from massive memory decline, they struggle at school, they have problems going to work and taking part um, at the normal life. At least they are seizure free in most cases, but it is not okay that they have got bigger problems in their cognitive status before, uh, after the surgery than they had before. What they do now is they give you a pencil and they give you a paper. And let's think maybe there is a labyrinth on it. And then they say, okay, you're here at point A and here's point B. So draw the line from point A to point B. And you see, this doesn't really solve the problem the patients have. And so that means you're actually helping patients to recover um, using a virtual reality in, in terms of rehabilitation. Is that true? Yeah, that's totally true because um, only paper pencil exercises. Um, in psychology, we got one big thing. It is the so-called transfer problem. We do something, as I already mentioned, on a paper, and it is more a diagnostic tool. And as we know, diagnostics are not treatment. We need there something that really um, goes into treatment, and virtual reality might be this tool to really treat those patients and do not only diagnose problems that the patient knows himself very good about. Um, to get a little bit more into the history, so people with epilepsy, they cannot live normal lives. For example, they cannot hold knives, they cannot operate heavy machinery, they cannot drive a car, they cannot even go shopping by themselves just because maybe they have an outburst and then they're completely knocked out. So it makes the life pretty hard and after the surgery, you would expect it to get better and uh, you help those people actually getting better, right? Right. We are the support those patients need to fully recover in this process. As we know, it is already hard enough to be not able to maybe go to school or to 
not drive a car or to have problems uh, with the people around you. And sometimes those people suffer already from depression or stuff like this. And then the seizure stops, but it doesn't end at this point. Maybe those people can go by car again or they will go to university and live a mostly normal life. But what is living this normal life without being able to memorize what you, what you said last day? This is a critically important part of remission. So this rehabilitation is so important. And the problem is most clinics, most physicians don't really know how important this neuro rehab is as there aren't tools right now that really provide an effective treatment. And you help with this virtual reality tool to um, the patients to recover and kind of rebuild their memory? Right, there is, um, yeah, to rebuild is a, is a really good word because everything we do is based on the so-called principle of neuronal plasticity. It is something from neurobiology and from psychology that says if you train something in a very, very strong way, our brain is able to focus something that got lost in a new part of the brain. So let's say we take the part of the memory. I already mentioned it is on the left and on the right side of the brain above the ear. And if I take out the left part of the brain that is for the memory, the right part of the brain sees, okay, there's something missing, there got something lost. And if I train it in a, in a good manner and in a high frequency manner, the right part of the brain will take everything the left part took away. And this is what, ne what neuronal plasticity is doing, but it has to be stimulated. And if you don't stimulate it right after the surgery, there are so many possibilities getting lost. And this is something that can be prevented. Um, I'm curious to know is like you, it's it's not a problem you just stumble onto or it's of on a big list of things uh, everybody needs to do in their life. How did you end up with this idea? It's a rather personal story. I was a patient of neurosurgery. I suffered for 10 years from epilepsy and in 2015 I had neurosurgery where they took out my temporal lobe and my hippocampus, that is the exact part for the memory in the brain. I was a first semester student of psychology and I said, okay, but what will be when I will lose all these things? And when I met Marlboro, she said, okay, what is when we will lose those things? And there are so many patients that face the same things. And after the surgery today, I'm seizure free but it is not the normal case and I don't have those big problems right now, but that is not the normal thing because most patients suffer from this massive memory decline. And when I asked my, my physicians at the university hospital, then they told me, okay, here, you got the pencil, you got the paper, so go do something with it. And that was really not sufficient. This is how we came up with this idea and how we want to help those people that still face those problems and still face the fear because currently in Germany there are 588,000 people that face these fear per year only by neurosurgery, by brain tumors or by epilepsy. And this can't be something that we can leave alone, that we can stand alone here. There has to be done something. So this is for both of us a personal topic that has got also for the public a great, a great meaning. Um, we always talk about your solution. How far along are you already in the way? Like, is it, is it like an idea stage? Do you have some try programs? Are you actually in a test stage where you work with actual patients? How far are you there? Right now we are developing the solution for our virtual reality application. We got a fully concept on, on paper and I, I think I need to explain a bit uh, more. Um, there's on the one hand, this virtual reality application, and it is connected with um, a software that the, the doctor holds on his PC. Because what we want to do is we don't want to rehab smart only. We also want to connect the physician with his patient so that he can monitor the whole rehab process 
from the clinic while the patient is able to train at home. This is what rehab makes um, even more modern and a bit more disruptive. And right now, as I mentioned, we developed the software um, that we could work with virtual reality on. And in the next step, we will develop the software that the physician can use. We work closely together with the University Hospital at Freiburg, where we um, have got the ep epileptologists and the neuropsychologists. They support us with their knowledge and their experience. And together with them, we are planning the first pilot studies so that we can work hopefully next year with the first patients to evaluate the concept and how it could work in the future. In the, in the course of the next year, we will further develop the whole application. So now it's in an early stage and uh, until December, we will have our prototype. And with that, we then pursue the first tests where we ask the patients, okay, how do you feel about this? And where do you see something we could do better? And if we got those first feedbacks, we can modify the application. And then we want to test it with the patients that just go out of neurosurgery and see, okay, how are the clinical effects of the application? And how does your memory change after this while you use living brain? That was a very nice closing word. Thank you very much and good luck with your application. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Completely my pleasure.